You're connected to San Diego's late news leader. This is 10 News Live at 11. The writing campaign is a very uphill row. The handicapping begins hours before a new candidate is expected to enter the race for mayor. 10 News has learned that Councilwoman Donna Fry is expected to announce her candidacy tomorrow morning. Good evening, I'm Hal Clement. And I'm Carol LeBeau. If she does take the leap, she may be able to write down one advantage. 10 News reporter Michael Chen joins us with tonight's top story. For a day, she's been leaning toward the idea of running. Tomorrow, it appears the idea will turn into political reality. As for Fry's chances, that could depend on not just who people vote for, but how. And, and they have said, they said, all we're asking you to do is allow us to write your name. And just Supporters asked her to run, but how many voters would actually ink her name? Well, and her chances are uh, maybe a little better of a snowball's chance in Hades, but not a lot better. SDSU professor Dr. Peter Anderson says write-in campaigns are tough, usually lacking in funding and organization. But if Fry runs, she can jot down one advantage thanks to the way in which San Diegans will cast their votes. It's called an optical scan paper ballot. And we have a sample here from a Florida county. Just like in school, you fill in the oval for your choice. There is one difference from elections past. You'll always have a pen in your hand. Some voters say that could make the difference. Because you don't have to get a pen, pretty much. You already have it with you. so. It's less time consuming, yeah. And more convenience for voters not used to writing in candidates. They have to write a name. And that isn't something that every voter understands how to do, is willing to do. Voters could get even more help. When the county begins its education campaign on the new voting method, the mailer will include simple instructions on write-in candidates. Some say that's critical. You to understand that the American l electorate ranges from the most savvy politicos in the world to people that are lucky to find the polling booth. As for whether Fry can find her way to the mayor's seat, Dr. Anderson and some voters say it won't be easy. I'm going to vote for one of those two names. Why? Because I'm going to only believe those are my two choices. If it's three choices, expect a shakeup in the race. Some have said Fry could help Mayor Murphy by splitting up the anti-establishment vote Others, like Dr. Anderson, say Fry, a Democrat, could benefit because the other candidates, both Republicans, could split that vote. All right, Michael. Well, thank you very much. Of course, it's a nonpartisan race, so uh, it'll be interesting to see. No parties on that ballot. All right. Thanks, Michael. Mayor Murphy is proposing freezing the salaries of city employees for two years. It's his latest effort to deal with the financial mess created by the city's huge pension fund deficit. Murphy says the freeze would help maintain fire protection and other services while still honoring commitments to retirees. I am optimistic that uh, most, if not all, of the labor unions would, are, would, would be willing to sit down and, and, and discuss the salary freeze and these other issues. Um, I just can't guarantee it. City workers we talk to say they're willing to listen to the plan. Murphy's opponent, Ron Roberts, says the freeze proposal is too little too late. He's proposed shelving plans for a 10-story downtown library until the city gets a better grasp on its finances. One of the most pivotal events in the presidential campaign is less than 24 hours away. Tomorrow night, President Bush and John Kerry will debate in Florida. The president spent the day touring the hurricane damage in that state. Senator Kerry arrived tonight. Senator John Kerry! Kerry supporters cheered the senator as he arrived in Fort Lauderdale on the eve of his first presidential debate. It's a great thing for the world. It's a great thing for all the people who care about all these issues that tomorrow we're going to get an opportunity to debate with the president about the direction of our country. Senator Kerry comes into this debate the underdog. He's behind in the polls and his favorability numbers leave a lot to be desired. But he has a lot of experience debating in the Senate as a prosecutor and at Yale. Still, the Kerry campaign is not underestimating President Bush's abilities. He wins these debates on style very often, but unfortunately, um, you know, in the coming weeks of this election, the president's going to have to win this election on substance, and his record is not one um, that, you know, the American people like. President Bush is hoping to deliver a decisive blow in this first debate. Aides say he will lay out a clear plan for his second term 
and criticize his opponent's positions on national security, something he's been practicing since the summer. For us, it's been doubly challenging because when we started, uh, we knew sort of where John Kerry was on the war on terror. We knew where he was on Iraq, but yet that continues to evolve. So with each practice session, we've had to sort of adjust. The stage is set. Now both candidates need to deliver. And of course, you can watch the presidential debate right here tomorrow night from 6 to 8. At 11, we'll talk to undecided voters about which candidate they think won the debate. A federal judge has struck down a law that allows the government to secretly search your telephone and internet records. The law in question is part of the Patriot Act. It requires phone and internet companies to turn over customer records to law enforcement without telling the customer. But a judge ruled that that law violates a person's right against unreasonable search and seizure. No word yet if the government plans to appeal. A follow-up to a story we first brought you last night. The Anti-Defamation League is calling for the resignation of a city school board member. During last night's meeting, trustee Fran Zimmerman compared a restructuring plan to the Holocaust. Gauleiters were the people in the ghetto in Europe who shepherded, they were Jews who worked for the Nazis, and they shepherded their own people onto the trains. And that is what we're being asked to do here. Some of Zimmerman's colleagues were outraged, and today the Anti-Defamation League issued an open letter to Zimmerman requesting she either publicly and unequivocally retract the comments or resign. We called Zimmerman, who told us she doesn't know about the letter and has no plans to apologize or resign. A Ramona man's in big trouble for allegedly selling toys he was supposed to destroy. The government recalled hundreds of thousands of toy cars sold at Chevron gas stations because young children could choke on them. The government paid $40,000 to Matthew Lotze's liquidation company to destroy those toys, but prosecutors claim Lotze instead sold the cars to toy wholesalers without telling them about the safety hazard. He now faces federal charges. Another substantial earthquake in central California, a 5.0 quake hit about 4 this afternoon, some 17 miles northeast of Arvin near Bakersfield. So far, no reports of any damage or injuries. The area is not far from the city of Parkfield, where a 6.0 quake hit yesterday. It rattled nerves and caused minor damage to some homes. It's been followed by hundreds of aftershocks, including one today measuring 5.0. The Parkfield quake was on the San Andreas Fault, the Arvin quake on a different fault line. A white knuckle ride with $10 million on the line, why some folks in Poway were especially interested in today's trip into space coming up. Plus, some of the jobs Martha Stewart will be expected to do during her five-month stay in prison. It's new, and it's called Scent Stories. I'm Leonard Guriel. It's supposed to be an iPod for your nose, a way to create a special mood of scent in your home. But does it work? The answer coming up on 10 News, live at 11. Cool autumn-like weather has come to San Diego. Will it stay for a while? All of that's coming up on 10 News, live at 11. Oh my goodness, and <laughs> home. Amanda's empty apartment is now a home, thanks to our hometown makeover volunteers. Stay connected to 10 News for more stories that make a real difference for our local community. I'm Hal Clement. Operation Biggs provides mentors to children of military families through Big Brothers Big Sisters programs at Camp Pendleton. Volunteers meet with children and provide quality time. So important to a child whose parent has been deployed. Call this number and help our military families. The 2004 San Diego Film Festival is coming to the Gas Lab Quarter September 29th through October 3rd. Log on to the SanDiegoChannel.com for more info and to get your tickets today in partnership with the all-new Volvo V50. You think about how a car has to fit into your life. You also think how your life sometimes has to fit into a car. You think about that, and then you build the all-new Volvo V50 Sports Activity Wagon. It's got plenty of room for your fashion, whatever it may be. Test drive the Volvo V50 today. Thanks, everybody, for coming out this year. 2004 is one we'll never forget. We'll see you next year at Petco. Hi, I just want to thank all you fans for making this first year at Petco a very fun year for all of us. Thank you for your support, San Diego. Gracias por venir a vernos jugar. Que Dios lo bendiga. Gracias. What a tremendous inaugural season. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you next year. Padres Baseball. We must pass Proposition 71. As an MD, I took an oath that the very highest priority was the treatment of patients 
The chances for diseases to be cured by stem cell research are high, but only if we start. If the promise of stem cell research comes true, we can hope for a single treatment with the right stem cells to cure diseases that every family has. Please join me in voting yes on 71. Introducing the Nissan Quest, a revolutionary minivan featuring five Skyview windows, front and side impact five-star safety rating, an innovative center console, automated side and rear lift doors, and fold away second and third row seats. Moms have changed. Shouldn't the minivan? You're connected to San Diego's late news leader with Carol LeBeau and Hal Clement. This is 10 News Live at 11. Hard to believe, but it's been nearly a year since the October firestorms, and today the county held a summit to look at what we've done to prevent that from happening again. Quite a lot has changed. Both Navy and Marine Corps pilots are now certified to help fight fires from the air. There are now two full-time regional helicopters, and pilots will be able to fly until sunset as long as it's safe. With all this can while all this can help, stopping a huge fire is impossible. It's like impossible. stopping an earthquake or stopping a, a, a hurricane. You can't stop them until the weather changes or something. So the focus needs to be on what can we do in the future to prevent the damage. And a warning to people who haven't cleared brush from their property. A new law taking effect in January will allow the CDF to clear that brush and then bill the property owner for the work. He started with one in kindergarten cop, but Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger is saying no to allowing ferrets as pets. Today, the governor vetoed a bill that would have legalized ferrets as pets in California. Schwarzenegger says he's concerned there has not been enough study into whether ferrets are a danger to people and the environment. He says he's open to signing the bill once those studies have been done. A Poway company is toasting today's successful launch of Spaceship One. The private rocket ship and its pilot soared past the edge of space this morning in a bid to earn the $10 million X Prize. The flight experienced some unexpected twists and turns on the way down, but pilot Mike Melville says they were due to pilot error, not an engine problem. For Poway Bay Space Dev, which designed the rocket's hybrid motor, it was a major step forward. I see this as a very up-and-coming business. We're lucky to be at the right place at the right time. We're helping making it happen, and uh, we're very excited about it. Spaceship One must still complete a second mission within two weeks in order to win that X Prize. Benson says they expect to be ready to go again on Sunday. Martha Stewart is heading to Camp Cupcake. Stewart will serve her five-month prison sentence at a minimum security women's prison in West Virginia. The facility was chosen because of its remote location, less accessible to the media. Stewart must report to the prison by October 8th. Nicknamed Camp Cupcake, the prison has no private cells and requires inmates to work at jobs such as ground maintenance, sanitation, and food service. Well, food service, that would be right up certainly along her line, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's being billed as an iPod for your nose. A new device claims it can take you away by playing fragrances much the same way you play music. Does it work? Our Leonard Viriel has the answer. Many of us work hard to bring the freshness of outdoors into our home. Flowers are nice. Burning a scented candle is certainly another way. But now there is a whole new way to create a scent environment in your home. The company that makes Febreze has created Scent Stories. So you can now play scents at home just like you would play music. And just like music, the scents would create a special mood. Maybe you would visit a pristine forest. Or a secret garden. There are several different theme discs and each carries five tracks to make up the scent story. You could play say relaxing in the hammock. I was wondering what it would smell like to be relaxing in a hammock. I know what it feels like but I'm not sure that I know what it smells like. Doris Lewis and Nadia and Kona volunteer to test scent stories each tested independently in their own homes with their own players and discs. As the scents were released, each spent time indoors normally, watching TV, studying, relaxing with a magazine, or chatting on the phone. Talk to you later. Bye. In the background, the disc would emit five different fragrances over two and a half hours. A single disc can be used up to 20 times. Our volunteers sampled several different scent stories. Well, it definitely smelled really nice. 
Good news, since the player unit sells for about $30 and the replacement discs about $7 each. So did it mentally transport our testers? It didn't feel like I was wandering barefoot on the shore. No emotional triggers? I'm still in my place. Um, and, I mean, it really didn't take me away anywhere. We want to stress that every cent played was pleasing. But for our testers, there was no storytelling. You had a lot of expectation, I think, going in. Um, but at the end of the day, it was just another simple way to make the house smell nice. Both Doris and Nadia loved the concept. I was hoping for it, uh -huh. but no, didn't get it. In our test, the hopes of a mini emotional vacation were dashed. Both left holding their passports disappointed. Would have been great. I haven't relaxed in a hammock in a long time. <laughs> you know, I can't remember the last time I explored in Mountain Trail. This sense story did not end happily. With photojournalist Kyle Majors, Leonard Villarreal, 10 News. Now, Leonard wants to stress there was nothing unpleasant about scent stories, but for the money, both volunteers say they plan to stick with candles. It's medium grade. Next week, we test cold heat, a soldering tool that allows you to get the job done while reducing the chance of getting burned. Find out if it works next Wednesday at 11. And if you have a product you'd like to see tested, we'd like to hear from you. Just write or email Leonard at one of the addresses there popping up on your screen. And for more information about our product tests, log on to the SanDiegoChannel.com and click on Does It Work? See, I actually invented a rudimentary version of that scent disc thing. You have the compost heat. Yeah, I brought in a little plate full of compost and put on the fan so that it blew across it, <laughs> and it took me away back to the garden. <laughs> Every yeah, day we had to... Took us away, too, out of the building. Uh, oh, here comes Lauren now. Oh. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. It's my shoes. If I take them off, they're fine. Um, a real nice day in San Diego County. If you are among those people who have, has moved here from somewhere, that has a vivid fall type uh, weather. We don't typically here in San Diego, but uh, today we did. Okay, on to uh, the San Diego, what it is like right now. 67 degrees, dew points at 55. Barometric pressure, 29.93 and steady. Air quality is good. Uh, the relative humidity has been very low today, despite the fact that we had some drizzle this morning and we have had a trough of low pressure moving through the area. That usually means the air will get a lot more moist. Water temperatures at 68 waves tomorrow expected to be about 2 to 4 feet out of the southwest at 14 second intervals. The high tide at 1041 in the morning. Around the county tonight, 60 at Rancho Bernardo, 59 at, Ju uh, at Fallbrook, rather, only 46 on Mount Laguna, and 69 in Borrego Springs. Compare those numbers to just how hot it got today. Not very along the coast. 74 Imperial Beach, 73 Mission Beach. Inland a little bit, just 72 at La Mesa, 71 uh, Mira Mesa. So as that trough comes through, you don't get a lot of variation in temperature. Only 69 at Alpine, 76 Santee, and 71 in Ramona. The North County looked like this. From 78 at Vista to 75 at Valley Center. 85 there in at Palomar, or 65 rather. And uh, looking down in the western United States, here is why we've had that weather. This little trough of low pressure rotated through the area. It's actually bringing some rain to parts of the Great Basin and parts of the southwest tonight. The most we'll get out of it is some more of that drizzle tomorrow morning. Uh, so the onshore flow will continue. Uh, it's spun up an eddy. That eddy is some of basically those stratus layer, marine layer clouds. As they come in, the trough uh, actually wrings some of the moisture out. That's why we get some drizzle early in the morning. But there'll still be plenty of sunshine for the afternoon. All of this rain is uh, moving to the east, but not before dumping a fair amount of rain through uh, eastern New Mexico tonight, probably into west Texas, obviously, next tomorrow. Uh, finally, look at this. No radar images of uh, any kind of severe weather left over from Gene on the East Coast. That's not to say there hasn't been any. Let's go to Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, this is one of the uh, areas of Virginia extremely hard hit uh, by flooding after Gene. Uh, the Roanoke area today picked up about 12 inches of rain uh, over the last 24 hours. And as a result, the kind of pictures you see here. Also, some other leftover uh, damage from Gene. A bridge fell in North Carolina, a small two-lane bridge. Uh, one car did go into the water, and the uh, occupants of that car have not been found yet, but the best is not 
uh, believe to be what they will find. 69 degrees Norfolk right now, 53 Boston. So we're starting to see some fall-like temperatures there. 76 Miami, 57 in Portland, 52 at Helena, 60 at Kansas City. These temperatures are definitely lower than they were just a couple of weeks ago at this hour. Los Angeles, though, at uh, 64 and Las Vegas at 73. Okay, you ready for the second half of the work week? 70 along the coast on Thursday. There could be again some drizzle tomorrow morning and clouds that will be pretty sticky throughout the day hanging in. 72 is the best we're hoping for for the inland valleys. Again, drizzle likely. Mountains cool at 69 and the deserts uh, cooler than we've seen for many, many months down below 90 degrees tomorrow at 89. Over the next five days, Friday's the last day of this uh, trophy type of autumn weather and then we begin to uh, get a little bit warmer as we head into the weekend and into next week uh, but no real heat wave coming and at this time of the year I'm also happy to say no signs of uh, Santa Ana in the near future but no rain either. A drop of rain or two would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. All nice. right we will wait. Thanks Lauren. A change at the bar many people are not at all happy about. Why fans of Jack Daniels are so upset. Coming up on 10 News Live at 11. And the Padres go extra innings trying to hang on to their playoff lives. Jeff is up next with sports. The Lincoln Mercury Cross Line Clearance. Lincoln Aviator. 32 valve, 302 horsepower engine. Four wheel independent suspension. Number one in customer satisfaction with dealer service. Zero percent financing or up to $5,000 cash back. Your fajita chicken toasted corn chowder? He'll be home in a minute. traffic. It's like dining out at home. Signature soups from Vons. Made fresh with the finest gourmet ingredients. Only in the deli at Vons. Or shop at home on Vons.com. New Subway for a limited time. Introducing the Carne Asada Steak Sub. Made in the traditional style. Delicious marinated beef steak grilled to a tender, flavorful perfection. And you get a big half pound of Carne Asada Steak on a foot long sub with cilantro, fresh pico de gallo salsa, avocado, and your favorite veggies. All on your choice of Subway's fresh baked gourmet breads. It is a great new taste you don't want to miss. The carne asada steaks up. Savor the flavor. Subway, eat fresh. Cavalia, a magical encounter between horse and man. Traction, comfort, trimmed in leather and built to handle any terrain. Introducing the Subaru Forester LL Bean Edition. With its unique blend of rugged capability and impeccable styling, this is one vehicle worthy of the LL Bean name, both inside and out. The Forester and Outback LL Bean Editions from the new Subaru. Visit your Subaru dealer for 2.9% APR for 63 months on every 2005 Subaru. Nancy Connie created Sky Hunters as an education and rehabilitation program for San Diego's birds of prey. Our thanks from 10 News, Semper Energy, and Leave San Diego. You're connected to San Diego's local news leader for highlights, scores, and complete sports coverage with Jeff Collier. It was the great philosopher Yogi Berra who said, it isn't over till it's <laughs> over, and for the Padres, it isn't over. It's not over, and if they win tomorrow night, they guarantee that they'll at least play for another day. Wow. Because a couple things happened in the wild card. I'll explain in a second. The last gasp for the Padres, an extended deep breath teetering on the brink of playoff elimination. The Padres out of the division race, of course, but still clinging to that wild card dream. The fans expressing the love it at Petco tonight. Fun, David Wells knows there's no margin for error. you got to win the remaining so five, long. including tonight, with the Giants in the race as well. And they jump on Wells in the first. Pedro Feliz, broken bat triple. 
2-0, but here come the Padres. Former giant Rich Aurelia turns on one, takes Noah Lowry out. A solo shot for Rich, it's 2-1. 3-1 Giants in the sixth, and how about a comeback completed? Ramon Hernandez ties the game at three with a two-run shot. Bottom nine now, still tied. Kerry Robinson lays down the bunt. Jorvik Torrealba throws it away. Later, Mark Loretto at the base is loaded. Again, it's the 10th inning, excuse me. Dustin Moore coming on is going to make a catch, but falls down. Kerry Robinson scores the winning run 4-3, but the enthusiasm was tempered a bit as Moore had to have his leg immobilized and was carried off the field after the Padres won the game. Now, fans, meantime, saying goodbye to baseball in Montreal tonight, including an Expos fan who tossed a golf ball onto the field during the game. The Expos are moving to Washington, D.C. next year. The announcement was today. It's official. So this is the final game ever for the team that came in the same year as the Padres in 1969. Meantime, the Astros, the new wild card leaders, they won their franchise best 15th straight home game. They knocked off the Cardinals today 6-4. to four. So here it is. The Astros now control their own destiny. Wild card leaders, the Padres are two and a half back again, meaning the Padres will keep their playoff hopes alive regardless if they win the Petco finale tomorrow. The Dodgers are going to be without Milton Bradley for the rest of the regular season. He was suspended today, in essence, five games for slamming a plastic bottle into the stands last night. Bradley's decided not to appeal and says, actually, he's pretty contrite about it, says he's going to try to get some help with his anger issues. Well, Tennessee Titans quarterback Steve McNair still questionable for the game against the Chargers on Sunday. Backup Billy Volek would start in his place if McNair can't go. But honestly, the Chargers control their own destiny by not playing from behind. I can't tell you how many games in the last, you know, last year and this year we've started down 3-0, 7-0, 10-0, whatever. Uh, you know, that's... That's on us as an offense to, to go down there and, and get points and, you know, put our, put our defense in better positions. It's important that anytime you come in to a game, you need to establish a tone and a level that you're going to play at. And um, it's, it's definitely this game is definitely important for us to come out and, and put, throw the ball around and, and keep them honest. Again, 1 p.m. tomorrow is the deadline, but it looks like it's going to be blacked out again here locally. Well, the love fest continues between now ex-Laker teammates Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal, the L.A. Times quoting a Colorado detective who says that Bryant, just hours after his, after his sexual encounter with that woman, told police that he should have done what Shaq does, that Shaq would pay his women not to say anything, and claimed Shaq had paid up to $1 million already for similar situations. O'Neal, reacting angrily today, told ESPN, that's, of course, ridiculous, never hung around Kobe, and how he knows anything about me, Shaq, is funny. And then adds, quote, I'm not the one buying love, he's the one buying love, end quote. Christmas Day, Heat Lakers. I feel like a constant commercial for that Christmas Day game. Ah. I think those two are what you call don't invite them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, nice, Chef. If you've noticed your drinks are a little weaker lately, we know why. The change in Jack Daniels that's not going over well with some people. Next. <laughs> Once you notice it, you won't notice anything else. The FX from Infinity. California used to give teachers a tax credit for buying classroom supplies the schools can no longer afford. And last year, that tax credit was taken away. Meanwhile, California lets Indian casinos, an $8 billion monopoly, pay nothing in state taxes. So teachers and children lose while Indian casinos win. I didn't vote for that. Did you? Yes, on 68. You pay your fair share. Why don't they? Oh, why can't anybody pick up their stuff? I'm constantly going, ow, 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 ow. For low prices, come on into Albertsons. Don't miss this week's preferred card savings, like Albertsons chicken drumsticks, thighs, and whole legs, just 77 cents a pound. Fresh vine-ripe cantaloupe, only 19 cents a pound. And delicious Albertsons ice cream, two for $5. Albertsons, helping make your life easier. Despite these obstacles, we've had a strong year, with tobacco revenues surpassing expectations. 
Our volume was more than 560 Promotion billion cigarettes. Expanding overseas market share. Destroying the tobacco market. revenues. As we expand into foreign markets. We now control the world. It's time for the Jeep 96 hour event. When qualified buyers make no monthly payments till 2005 on our great Jeep vehicles, choose between Wrangler, Liberty, and Grand Cherokee. All three come with our 770 powertrain limited warranty and now zero plus. Choose Grand Cherokee and get 0% financing plus $1,500 bonus cash for a total savings of up to $7,400. Hurry, no monthly payments till 2005 and September 30th, only at your Jeep dealer. Closed captioning is brought to you through a generous grant from Sleep Train Mattress Centers. Your ticket to a better night's sleep. Finally tonight, a change that has some whiskey connoisseurs outraged. Jack Daniels has watered down its famous sip and whiskey. The alcohol content of the old number seven black label has been lowered from 86 to 80 proof. The company says most customers prefer the less potent mix, but critics say Jack Daniels is just trying to save money. About 700 people have signed an online petition asking the company to switch back. Yeah, they call it old number six or eight now. 6.54. Six <laughs> oh, man. All right, enjoy. Nightline's up next. Got a mess? Clean up at 